I would say that anything which is not uh, in line with 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 uh, European Union law will be will be investigated. So uh, we uh, there is there we have the treaty and uh, we have our laws. So uh, not abiding by those laws, any member state which doesn't or any group which does not abide by by those laws will be investigated and then we shall we shall see what what needs to be uh, done depending on what what the case is yeah thank you very much uh, i will try to react on, on both the, the quote which which you which you reminded us of from from ursula von der Leyen's speech uh, uh, in this kind of policy we work with two terms diversity and equality and it, these two terms are not in any kind of conflict of or dichotomy because uh, we are fully recognizing we are different it's the diversity but where equality stands we have to have equal rights in front of the law and we have to have equal opportunities so I, I think that this is also the philosophy which you can see in our action plan and which we would like to see in the national uh, plans against racism. Uh, I would like to see in the national plans more emphasis on giving uh, the fair perspective for children and young people in Europe. But this is what you didn't ask about. On Eurocrime, of course, as, uh, as already Helena spoke about it, uh, there is a there, there is a there are two layers of, of the law in in uh, the EU. It's the EU uh, EU legislation and the national legislation. Uh, when we speak about criminal law, it is still prevailing domain of the member states. Anytime we want to introduce new euro crimes, we need to have a very strong legal basis. We need to have a very strong justification why we are proposing new Eurocrime. We need to see pan-European problem and we also need to see the will of the member states to accept it because as, as I'm telling you, this is a sensitive uh, field where we have shared competences but more dominances on the member state level. To be concrete, at this moment we have framework decision against racism and xenophobia on European level. I told you before that we are going to uh, not only in, enforce properly, and we are now uh, uh, working on the scrutiny of how the member states are implementing this legislation, but we will also look at whether the text uh, and whether the, this, this piece of legislation is still fit for purpose. And uh, as uh, we can see, it is the framework decision ex against racism and xenophobia, but not against other uh, crimes uh, targeted to different minorities. So, for instance, we do not have anything about the protection of, uh, for instance, LGBTI people uh, or, or some, some other minorities. Uh, and this is worth thinking about, whether this is the state we can we can be complacent uh, with, whether we should not uh, look into uh, the possibility to increase the fight against hate, hate crime and hate speech on European level. So to answer your questions, yes, we are discussing now whether we should not uh, start the debate with the member states and with the parliament about the possibility to increase uh, or to, to enlarge the scope of, of the hate crime uh, on the uh, offence uh, on the European level and if so, we will introduce that uh, already in the next year. This is, this is the plan we are now discussing in the Commission. And uh, I, I know it's not the topic of today's press conference, but also violence against women and hate crime against women uh, after the failure of Istanbul Convention. We will be also looking into the possibility of uh, coming with the legislation on, on the European level. It will be the domain of Helena Dali who is in intensively working on that. Thank you.